Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Kingdom Transformation Network's Morning Prayer. I am your host, Coach Shaiteria Jones, your spiritual midwife, helping you to see you as Jesus Christ sees you. Here at Kingdom Transformation, we are the bridge that connects identity, purpose, and destiny. Because when you know who you are, you can passionately pursue purpose. And when you passionately pursue purpose, you can occupy the place called destiny. Here at Kingdom Transformation, self-care is soul care. Because when you take care of the very depths of your soul, you are able to live the quality of life that Jesus Christ died for you to live. 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Oftentimes we are not experiencing what it is that Jesus Christ lived, died, and was resurrected for us to experience because we don't know how to appropriately apply the word of God to our lives so we can see the results that Jesus Christ has called us to. We have been through tragedy, trauma, pain, heartache, and all of that has weighed on the very depths of our soul and it has hindered the direction that God wants to take us in. But as those who belong to Jesus Christ, the great news is that God is the one who restores our soul. He is the repairer of the breach. He is the lifter of the bowed down head. He is the mentor of the brokenhearted. And we will not be a people who are moved in our experiences, but we move our experiences by the word of our God. And we have been in this prayer series, in this um um, new series, uh, you know, Identity Security. We've been in it for this will be the 23rd day. And um, we have experienced, you know, uh, looking at God's character. We have looked at our identity. And now we are in the very promises that belong to us. As those who belong to Jesus Christ, we have got to be a people who are very clear on the processes that God wants to take us through, that we have to be a people who are very clear on how it is that God has called us to handle a thing. Proverbs um, tells us in it to let uh, mercy and truth be bound upon the very tablets of our hearts. It is a total rewriting of the script that we have lived up until the point where we enter in and allow Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. Where we allow him to come in and make changes in us that were otherwise impossible, that were otherwise unlikely to take place because it is the very characteristics of God in parted into us that we produce as the very fruit of the spirit that will change our lives. And so we have looked at um, the truth that God is good, that no matter what we experience, God is good, period. We have um, looked at God as the God who loves us, that Again, no matter what it is that we do, God loves us. And there are plenty of people who will spend eternity in the very depths of hell that God loved, right? Um, but even in his love for us, we have to understand that we have a level of responsibility to get to know him so we can be who he called us to be. Then we looked at God as the God who fights for us. Oftentimes in our experiences, we really um, don't encounter people who fight for us wholeheartedly, but God demonstrates on a daily basis that he is truly the God who fights for us. Then we saw God as our exceeding great reward. This characteristic of God is instrumental in the life of the believer because when we see God as the God who is our exceeding great reward, we understand that he is a God who benefits us, a God of benefits, and in him we benefit well. And we looked at God as our shield and our buckler, the one who receives the blow before we ever experience it. So when 
we experience financial unrest or when we experience um, emotional distress, when we experience uh, pains in our marriage, when we struggle with raising our children, what we see is that God was impacted by that thing before we ever actually experienced it. When we when we think about the very characteristic of God as shield and buckler, what we see is that he goes before us. As a God who goes before us, he experiences with us what it is that we are experiencing thing. It tells us in the word that we don't have a high priest who is unfamiliar with what we go through, but he was at all point tempted like as we were, what, but without sin. He's a God who has experienced what it's like uh, to be mocked, to be uh, abandoned, to be rejected. He's a God who has experienced what it is that we have experienced. And he wants us to know that he wants uh, to be our shield and buckler, period. Because we are never forsaken. We are never alone, but we are perpetually in the very presence and care of God. We looked at God as holy, understanding that when we experience him, when we truly experience him as the holy God that he is, the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we think will be totally and completely transformed because we cannot be in the presence of a holy God and remain the same. We looked at God as righteous, understanding that his right standards will remain because his throne shall not be uh, shaken and his throne is built on righteousness and truth. We looked at God as the God of justice, the God who rights the wrongs and the balances, the God who does not like an unjust measure, the God who um, dispenses himself and vindicates those who have been wronged. We have looked at him as the God of correction as our personal GPS who says recalculating when we get it incorrect. He is the God who um, chastens us because we are his beloved, the ones that he loved because who you correct, you love. See, if you see a fool going astray, you look at them and you say that is a fool and they're gonna end up in a ditch. But because God loves us and he does not want foolishness to take us out, he says, wait a minute, that fool that you're referring to, that's my child. And I'm going to ensure their success. So let me recalculate, let me recalibrate, let me bring them into right alignment. Then we looked at God as the God who is our shepherd, the one who leads us. Um, and oftentimes we struggle with this uh, part of God, with us being those who have called to follow him because we have struggled with those in authority over us. But when we break free from <clears throat> the abuse of the authority because what can happen is if you have in the past been abused by authority you can allow yourself to be locked into a place where you're continuing to be abused by that same authority what do i mean by that when we don't release when we don't forgive we can't enter into the realm where we allow God himself to be our shepherd because we are perpetually living in the place of being abused by previous authorities. When we perpetually live in the place of past abuse, past hurt, past pains, we're reliving it and therefore we cut off that portion of our hearts to God. See, we enter into a realm where our hearts are hardened and in the hardness of our hearts, we cut off flow. In the natural, if your heart is hard because it is possible, in the natural to have a hard heart you have a uh, corroded arteries they're built up with plaque on the inside that plaque hinders the flow of blood if we look at how we've been called forth as a people to abide in God and him abiding in us it's a picture of a fetus abiding in the womb of its mother and the blood in the very body of the fetus so the fetus cannot live without the mother and it cannot live without its blood and so uh, they are are interlocked act codependent and operating in tandem one with another and when we begin to think of ourselves to that level um, with that type of need and connection to God we will be a people who are no longer bound by what we experience we are no longer bound and hindered and permitting darkness to rule over us because the word of God says we've been given the keys to the kingdom whatever we bind we bind uh, whatever we loose we loose right the same is applicable in our very lives we either permit Satan to have access to the very 
very depths of our soul or we say not so in the master name of Jesus because I will buy mercy and truth about my heart and I will allow it to be a place of holiness, a place of righteousness. And so we no longer want to bind ourselves by not allowing God to be our good shepherd, but we want him to be the, the good shepherd that he is um, and, and we walk under his authority. Then we stepped into section two where we saw ourselves as those who belong to God, as daughters and sons of the king. When you begin to see yourself as a child of God, one who carries the very DNA of the father, you begin to see life differently. When I began to see myself as a daughter of the king, it changed how I lived, how I walked, how I talked, how I expressed myself, my willingness to express myself. I used to be unexpressive. <laughs> I used to be uh, one who was just like, I'm not going to communicate communicate what I'm experiencing on the inside because I've been through too much. But the truth of the matter is, as a daughter of the king, I can go before my dad and say, Daddy, listen, this is what broke my heart and this is what I'm wrestling with. And I can weep before my father and I can get wrapped up in his lap and I can rest in his arms because he's my dad and he wants the best for me. And so being a daughter of the king has changed my entire life. Um, understanding that I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. It's not something that's just written in the word, but it's something that I am. I am literally the very righteousness of God. I am what is the rightness of of God, the righteous standards of God, I exude that. And so when the enemy comes against me, I say, absolutely not. I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Therefore, you cannot stand. We looked at ourselves as being accepted by God being those that when we are rejected in the world we are accepted in God see oftentimes we would be rejected because of what God wants to produce out of us because the enemy of our soul does not want us to become who it is that we've always been in God he wants us to feel like becoming is too difficult but the truth of the matter is that when we become we realize we've always been accepted in God there's always been a place prepared for us in his kingdom we looked at being the beloved of God, those who can really rest their head upon the very breast of Jesus. The, one of the names of God is the multi-breasted one, the one for whom we are nourished by, the one for whom we are in his presence and things are changed. Then we looked at ourselves as being redeemed, understanding that the very redemption center is Jesus Christ himself. We looked at being partakers of the divine nature of Jesus Christ, not living as mere mortals, but living as spirits that have a soul that live in a body. We looked at being heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we have an inheritance as being overcomers because Jesus himself overcame the world as being blessed, walking confidently as those who belong to God, living as the favorite of God because his face shines upon us. And now we are in section three, which is all about the promises of God. And we looked at all the promises of God being yes and amen. Yesterday, we looked at peace being our portion, and today, we will see joy as our inheritance. Today is day 23, and if you are on the Facebook, go ahead and share, share, share. If you are in the clubhouse, ping, ping, ping some people into the room as we enter in to, uh, you know, joy being our inheritance. Our focal scripture comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 13, and this is the KJV version of the Bible, and it reads, now the God of hope fill you you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost powerful kingdom people God has promised to give you joy as a part of your inheritance in him if you aren't experiencing the joy of the Lord you are probably tired and weary when your life is absent of the joy of the Lord all that you go through takes a lot out of you however when you have the joy of the Lord, you are able to stand in the toughest situations because you are being supplied with strength from God himself. Powerful kingdom people, you were not created to live this life apart from God. Instead, you were created to live your life in God. John 15 uh, verses 1 through 11 um, tell us this. I know you may be wondering, what does it look like to live my life in God? Living your life in God means that you are totally and completely dependent on God for everything. It is a picture of a fetus in the womb of its mother. When a fetus is in the womb of its mother, it is supplied with everything that it needs 
needs in order to be successful and healthy. If a fetus is removed from the womb of its mother prematurely, the chances of its survival are very limited. The quality of the life of the fetus is impacted when it is in, removed from the womb of its mother when it shouldn't be. The same is true for the life of a believer. We were created to live in God consistently. There is not a moment where we shouldn't live in God. When we begin to live outside of God, that is when issues arise that could have been avoided. Powerful kingdom people, in order to maintain your joy in the Lord, you must ensure that you are living in God like a fetus lives in the womb of its mother. You have probably grown accustomed to making decisions on your own. In the world, we are taught how to be independent, but in God, we have to learn how to walk in one accord with God, moving the way that he moves so that we can get the results that he gets. God wants you to inherit his joy. It's an attribute of the kingdom of heaven. Romans 14, 17. But the only way to inherit this promise is to take the promise keeper at his word and abide in him. Today, you will focus on abiding in God, not making any decisions absent of God, but looking to God for direction in all that you do. When I say looking to God for direction in all that you do, I literally mean in all that you do. Today, I challenge you to include God in every detail of your day, even those that you find small like what you eat. I believe that when you do this, you will begin to see the joy of the Lord pursuing you. The truth is that God wants to bless you with his joy, but you must do what he says willingly in order to receive his joy. I'm going to pray the prayer starter and then I will pray as the spirit leads. Father, we want your joy in all that we do. Father, we want your joy to pursue us. Lord, we want your best for us. And we know that we can only find your best by doing what your word tells us to do. Father, we repent for those moments where we did not take your word seriously. And we allowed the cares of this world to choke out the seeds that you desire to have planted in our lives. Lord, we want to be full of your joy, living from your kingdom in all that we do. Lord, we want your joy to be our strength. Lord, forgive Give us for wanting to do things our way and for thinking that we know best. Father, forgive us for the pride that we have hidden in our hearts that is in direct opposition to your holiness. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to move from the place of being tired and weary to the place of joy that you have always intended for us to occupy. Lord, we will begin to wait on you so that we can renew our strength. Thank you for this opportunity of refreshing, oh God. Thank you for this opportunity to allow you to change the very guards in our life, oh Father God. That no longer will we allow the very enemy of our soul to possess us, oh Father God. But we will be a people who possess our soul with patience. That we will be a people in the master name of Jesus who bow down before you and worship you in spirit and in truth understanding that as you have brought us into you oh father god you are looking to reward us with all that you are you are looking to unlock your blessings to us oh god you are looking to shower us in ways that we have never been showered before you are looking oh father god to bring forth miracle signs and wonders on our behalf you are looking to turn the tables on the enemy oh god you are looking to make the very enemies that have pursued us to be the very enemies who are pursued themselves you are looking to desolate the very camp of the enemy that we will be a people who operate in the very strength of your word and today we say we need your joy as our strength we need the very truth of your word to be deposited in the very depths of our soul that we will be a people who live freely oh father god who operate in the security of your word no longer will we be bound and broken oh father god because we are too prideful to allow you to have your way in the very depths of our soul so when we think about the truth of the matter, that it is the very spirit of God that resides on the inside of us, we get the opportunity every single day to be free. It, it tells us that it's the spirit of God that convicts us. It is the, the work of darkness that condemns us. Now, both of them are legal terms. Conviction 
is to be found guilty of a crime. But with the conviction of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is, con is, is saving us from the condemnation, the very punishment that would come with the tormented works of darkness, right? So we've been convicted in the very depths of our soul of any pride that would lock us out of a thing, of any sinful way, any wickedness, anything that would draw us away from the promises of God. The word of God says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And, and one of the things that I have discovered, uh, thank you, Jesus, based on uh, my connection to the, the Holy Spirit is that we are prone to thinking um, thoughts where we enter into agreement with devastation, right? We are prone to thinking of ways to hurt people, to mock people, to operate in foolish things. We are prone to do that. And in our uh, propensity to do the negative thing, sometimes we can drown out the convicting voice of the Spirit of God. He will never override our will, but He will give us an opportunity to yield to His Spirit. And so on this morning, morning we need to yield in those areas where we have intentionally became so prideful that we could not hear the voice of God redirecting us and ordering our steps so we could partake in joy some of us are void of joy because we are not listening to the very voice of the Lord we're not listening to him tell us listen you are harboring resentment for something that has happened to you 15 years ago you're harboring resentment concerning something that has happened to you 50 years ago. But when I sent my son to die on the very cross for you, I forgave your sins in an instance. I forgave it all. I forgave what you would do to me. I forgave how you would mock and ridicule me, how you would make me a reproach before the enemy, how you would lie against me and how you would falsely accuse me. I forgave you for every time you would hurt someone that was connected to me. I forgave you for every time you would enter into slander and gossip. I forgave you for every time you would wrongfully accuse another and how how you would uh, uh, um, irresponsibly spend your money. I forgave you for how you would mishandle your children. I forgave you for the wrong that you would do, but yet you refuse to honor me by, by forgiving those who have wronged you. What we have to understand is forgiveness is us honoring God. It is a way for us to say, God, you honored me on the cross. God honored us on the cross. He honored us on the cross by allowing his son to be bruised and broken for us. And often we are not experiencing his joy, which is a component of his kingdom. We are under the very government of God. And when we are not experiencing the benefit of the kingdom, it is because of something we have willingly entered into. It is because of something we have not released. It is because of a perspective that we are carrying. It is because of a belief system that has been encoded on our soul, not because of anything that God has ever done, but it is because of what we willingly enter into every single day. Our willingness to say, I want my heart to be hard. I want my arteries to be um, corroded. I want the plaque um, um, to be built up spiritually in the very thing that I need in order for the lifeblood of the Lord to pump through me, we enter in willingly into that saying, I know that I haven't forgiven this person. I know that I'm walking in unbelief. I know that I'm behaving ungratefully before you, God. But because I feel like doing it, I'm going to do it anyway. If we want the very joy of the Lord to be our strength, we have to be willing to lay down pride. <clears throat> Often we have prideful mindsets that we don't even know our pride. We are walking against the very plans and purposes of God for us and we don't know it. So we're asking, oh God, that you reveal the very pride in the depths of our soul that is keeping us from your joy, that is locking us out of your joy, that is causing us to lie and wait one for another, oh God, that is causing us to fight battles that you never intended for us to fight. We are, are waging war against our own souls, against our own destinies, because we are not allowing God to speak to us. We are not allowing the conviction of the Holy Spirit to redirect us and to realign us so we can be a purpose-filled people who obtain the promises. Today, we say we repent, oh God. We repent 
for wanting to live in unforgiveness. We repent for wanting to be wayward, oh God. We repent for wanting to be broken, oh God. We repent for wanting to blame you for our discomfort and the unbelief that we are currently experiencing, oh God. And we are asking that you wash us white as snow in this place, oh God. Some of us have swords drawn against the Lord even in this moment. You lack joy because you are accusing God concerning something that he would never do. You have literally a sword drawn against God. You literally have an accusation pointed at the God who is so great. And so today we are asking in the master name of Jesus, oh God, that you show us where our swords have been drawn against you, oh God. Show us, oh Father God, where we have set our faces against your plans and your purposes for us. Show us, oh God, where we have become a people who have been enraged and infuriated against you, oh God. David said, against you and you alone, oh God, have I sinned. And oftentimes we sin against God by becoming angry with God. We sin against him by creating um, these stories against him concerning who he is. But if we are going to partake in the promise of the joy of God, we have got to lay down our swords that we have against God. And so today we are asking that you open our eyes to see how we have accused you night and day like Satan, oh God. How we have accused you in our hearts and how we have allowed the very hardness of our hearts to continue. See, when we look at the, an example of a hardened heart, we can look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh was one who thought he was God. And so he accused God of not being God. So he um, entered into this battle with God. He enters into this battle with God believing that he could defeat God, believing that what God was requesting of him was an unreasonable request. Oftentimes we think that the requests that God make before us are unreasonable requests. And because we think that they are unreasonable, we continue to allow our hearts to be hardened. But God had to prove to the Egyptians who God really was. And so he sent Forth his hand against Pharaoh so that Pharaoh would know I am God and aside from me there is no other. God wants you to know that he's God and aside from him there is no other and he wants you to partake in his joy. He wants unspeakable joy to overwhelm you, unspeakable joy to flood your heart. He wants your joy to be filled again and he's saying whatever you are accusing him of, if you're accusing him of breaking your marriage, if you are accusing him of ruining your your finances, if you are accusing him of causing your children to go astray, what are you accusing God of on this morning? What are you accusing him of concerning your own life? What do you have against God on this morning that is keeping you in a low place, keeping you in a place where you are unable to experience his joy because God wants you to walk in the joy that is your strength. If you have been wearied, if you have been weighed down, it's because you have not been accessing the joy of the Lord and it's because you have said I won't access this thing and so on this morning we repent in the master name of Jesus and we ask that you reveal it unto us oh God reveal unto us why we have been so weighed down and weary why we have cried tears that we should not have necessarily cried sometimes we are crying tears that, that we don't even need to cry concerning situations that God has already handled. But we work ourselves up and we don't allow the very joy of God to be our strength. Because in the moment we are moved by what we see instead of by who God is. The promise that the joy of the Lord is our strength reminds us that no matter what we experience, we have been called forth to be a people who are filled with praise. Think of the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. They were challenged by the government that they were under in the natural. They were challenged by the king who said, listen, I'm a God. 
bow to me every time you see my statue this statue made of gold bow before it but they said because we serve the only one true wise and living god will never bow before you and though you have um um lashed out and threatened us and though you have sent these threats against us to make our lives to cease we say we will still not bow before you because we know our god is capable of saving us that's a promise of god he's a saving god he's the god of salvation even before he sent his son, he was always the God of salvation because God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he will eternally be that God. And so they said, no matter what we're experiencing in this life, we're not going to be moved. We're not going to be shaken. We're not going to be a people who are in despair or in distress because we know that our God's hand is upon us. As those who belong to God, we have to begin to see that even in the midst of fire, and even in the midst of water, we can still have joy. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be reminded that we aren't the only people who have ever struggled in life. But we can be of good courage. We can take heart, oh Father God. We can be a people filled with joy because we understand that you are with us in the midst of all that we go through. For you are the very fourth man in the fire. And though the fire tried to take our lives, it cannot because you are with us. With us and so on this morning oh god we are asking that you extinguish every fire that has come against us oh god we are asking in the name of jesus that you make us fire walkers that you make us fire retardant oh father god that we would be a people who fight the fires in our lives oh father god a people who understand that because we have been called by your name we are able to stand on your very promises lord we bless you in the master name of jesus for how you are uncovering the very thing that looked to cover us in past seasons and even in this current season oh god that thing that looked to take uh the, the glory away from what you were doing in our hearts and in our minds but on this morning we will be a people of joy we will be a people who are continually postured before you in a posture of praise today we praise you for every trial and we praise you for every tribulation we praise you for every high place and we praise you for every low place we praise you oh father god for every time we were brought to a place where we could experience you in a new way we bless you oh father god for being our strength for touching us in a new way oh god and in those areas where we have not experienced you well oh god we are asking that destruction would come upon that mindset that it would be devastated and that we would no longer come against us we curse the very works of darkness that would seek to pervert us and the way we interact with you and we bring ourselves into total and complete submission before you on this morning oh god we submit our will to you oh god we submit our way to you we ask that you would order our steps that our feet don't slip oh god we are asking that you build us up on every weekend leading side, that you you press us into the new wine that you have called us forth to be. The only way that wine comes forth is through the pressing of the grapes. The only way that the oil of the olive will ever come forth is through the pressing of the olive. And so today we ask that you continue to press us and that as you press us, your joy would be seen. Your joy would be seen in us in the very press that we are in, oh Father God. I remember getting my hair pressed um, as a little girl. My mama burnt me, mama. Yeah, she burnt me. Um, but when I was getting my hair pressed, um, I, I knew that the end result from the pressing would be something that I looked forward to. And so I endured the heat of the pressing comb. I endured the heat of that straightening process because I wanted to see my hair in a, in a straight place. I wanted to see how long it was. I wanted to play with it. I wanted to experience it. And so the pressing, though, it had heat because it was on that good fire on the stove. And though I... I don't still have burn marks, but although I had a burn mark while my hair was being pressed, I knew that at the end I was going to enjoy it. I remember one day my mother was pressing my hair and she burnt me, honey. And she, <laughs> what she said was, that's your hair that burnt you, right? Because when my, when my hair got pressed, she's like, your hair holds heat. And so, you know, it would fall past my shoulders or it would fall. And so I remember her dropping the hair and it hit me and I yelled. And I ran away. I was like, no, I'm not 
I don't even know what I said, but whatever I said was foolishness. And so I ran upstairs and my mom was like, Shiteria, come back down here and finish getting your hair done. And I'm pouting in the closet. Like, I'm not getting my hair done. This hurts and I hate it, right? And so I'm throwing a tantrum. And she's like, if you don't come back downstairs. So I brought my little unhappy self back downstairs. But when my hair was finished, I appreciated the pressing. Although I had gotten burnt by the hot comb. I appreciated the press, right? I appreciated it because it produced a result that I wanted. And, and and in the midst of the press, we have to have joy. We can't throw a tantrum like I did at 11 or 12, right? We can't do that. We have to be a people who, while we are being pressed, while we are in that place, understanding that the end result is going to be something that's glorious, understanding that the end result is going to be beautification. Because um, when I was getting my hair pressed, I was trying to be cute. Right, I was like, I'm gonna be beautiful after this. I was, be, you know, beautiful before the press started, but after the press, honey, you couldn't tell me nothing, right? And so, as as we come forth, as the glory of God rests on us, what we enter into is into a realm where we are able to be the authorized representative of God based on what he has allowed us to experience in the place of the press. And so, Lord, we want to experience the press like never before, that your joy would be seen in us while we are going through, that our faces would be set like flints over father god that every time we are stricken your glory would be manifested oh god that we would be people who are filled with joy oh father god wrapped in joy oh god covered by your joy walking in your joy speaking in your joy being full expressions of your joy identifying as joy filled ones identifying as those who are a people of purpose who will not be swayed or moved by what we experience and so on this morning oh god we just thank you in the master name of jesus for flooding us with your joy and in the areas where we lack your joy expose to us the works of darkness in the very depths of our soul expose to us the lies that we have uh, believed oh god expose to us the lies that we have received and packed deep down in the very depths of our soul that have caused us to be a people who partake in devastation no longer will we be bound by what we are experiencing in the moment but we enter into a realm oh god where we allow your joy to be our strength where we we become a people who are fortified and faithful in you that your joy would fortify us in this season oh god write down why you are void of joy on this morning and ask the lord to heal you in that place lord <clears throat> We thank you for healing us on this morning in the places and spaces where we lack joy. We ask you to put your dunamis resurrection power on that, that you put your very glory and your light on that, that you would transform that place from a dead place to one that lives, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for putting your glory on us. We thank you, oh Father God, for changing us in this very moment. That we would no longer be heavy and weighed down, but we enter into a realm of freedom. We enter into a realm where we release those burdens into your hand, oh God. Today, we release the very burdens that have bound us. We release the very burdens that have restricted us, oh God. We release the very burdens that have called us into a barrenless place, oh God. We say not so in the master name of jesus but in this season we will bring forth fruit in this season we will bring forth fruit because your joy is our strength when we lack joy right um we are unable to produce the fruits that god wants us to produce we're unable to be a people who are multiplied in accordance with how he wants us multiplied we are a people who are unable to be replenished because we lack joy 
where there is no joy we don't have the ability to receive what it is that god wants for us but we say not so in the master name of jesus today we receive the joy of the lord today we believe that it is our portion today we believe that as we stand with god we will rule and reign with him and all that he has called us to no more devastation in our minds no more emotional um um decay we're no longer going to be decaying in our emotional state but we will live as those who belong to jesus christ thank you jesus thank you holy spirit lord we just bless you in this place that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men what you have in store for us. And today we say thank you. We say thank you, oh God. We say thank you, oh God. We say thank you, oh God. And we just ask that you would continue to have your way on the inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I pray this prayer on this morning has blessed you as we looked at the joy of the Lord being our inheritance as we pressed into being those who have the right to inherit it. It's a part of the will of God. He left it to us when Jesus Christ died. But we don't serve a God who's dead, but he got up with all power in his hands. And we still have access to the very joy of the Lord. It's our inheritance. It's a part of the will that has been left to us. When we read the word of God, it's a picture that is painted for us. It's our ability uh, to be uh, joy-filled people. Joy is not based on our circumstances, but it is based on the God that we serve, that we are filled with joy because he himself is joy. We are filled with him. He is in us. We are in him. Therefore, we are never absent of joy. Happiness is all about what is happening. But joy is all about your connection to the king. If you are void of joy, it's because you're not properly connected to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That doesn't mean you're not going to have momentary discomfort. But it means despite the momentary discomfort, you still have joy. They say it like this, the joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. And so what have you been allowing to impact your joy? What have you been allowing to remove from you? What is rightfully yours? It's your inheritance. It belongs to you. It has been placed as a gift concerning you. And so be sure that you are consistently partaking in the joy of the Lord in all that you do. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the promise of being the head and not the tail. So you don't want to miss it. You want to bring someone um, to hang out with you in this place of prayer prayer um share this video uh, with someone that you feel can benefit from it listen if you are interested in the devotional click the link on facebook in the description to this video you can get your very own copy of the devotional if you are interested in joining my community either beautiful souls or leader souls go ahead and join the community if you're like listen i am ready to begin to engage like i have never engaged before where i fight for my destiny where i fight for my right as a blood-bought believer where i fight for the truth of god's word concerning me where i shed everything that does not look like glory that is connected to me then you want to join me in either beautiful souls or leader souls beautiful soul is where god changes our mess into a miracle it's where you know, every component that we have experienced, we get to examine that through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And leader soul is where God turns our leadership into legacy. If you feel like God is breathing on you as a leader, as he has put his hand on you as a leader, and you want to be perfected concerning your leadership, then leader souls is that place. It's a place where you begin to learn how to lead through love. It's a place where you lead based on the word of God, where you unlock the hidden treasures in the word concerning you and how you've been called forth to handle it. Uh, beautiful souls is where you begin to see there is a message in all that you have experienced. And as you unearth that message, you will begin to see yourself as the glorious one that God has called you. And so uh, you can go ahead and register for either one of those memberships. They are available to you. You can join us if you are on Clubhouse. You can um, go to my website and sign up or you can uh, go to Instagram and click the link in my bio to sign up for that. But we'll be back tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
um, to continue uh, to see ourselves as God sees us. And so Facebook, if you have a prayer request or praise report, send it to me. I want to pray with you. I want to rejoice with you. Um, send me a message and I uh, will press in and pray with you. If you are on the clubhouse and you have a prayer request or a praise report, go ahead. I want um, uh, to join you in that space as well. And so listen, I am going to end the broadcast on the good Facebook, but I will see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you soon, Facebook.